The process of transcription involves the production of RNA molecules from DNA molecules and what this process actually involves is the passing down of the genetic information from the DNA to the RNA molecules and it's the RNA molecules that are directly involved in the process of protein synthesis that takes place in the cytoplasm of our cell. Now, one important type of RNA molecule is known as messenger RNA or mRNA. And it's the mRNA that actually serves as the template for protein synthesis that takes place in the ribosomes in the cytoplasm of our cell. Now, before our messenger RNA actually leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm where it attaches to the ribosomes and undergoes protein synthesis, our messenger RNA has to undergo several important types of modifications, several important types of post-transcription processes. Now, within the nucleus of our cell, we produce a molecule known as the precursor mRNA. So the mRNA that is formed directly following the process of transcription before any type of post-transcriptional modification actually took place is known as the precursor mRNA or simply as the mRNA or the pre-mRNA. So this is the mRNA that has not yet undergone the necessary modification processes that are needed for the molecule to exit the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. And there are three important types of post-transcriptional modifications. So we have the addition of the 5-guanosine triphosphate cap, we have the polyadenylation of the 3 and tail, and we have the splicing of our exons and the removal of our introns. So let's take a look at each one of these post-transcriptional modifications of the mRNA and see what they are and why they actually take place. And let's begin with the addition of the 5 and guanosine triphosphate cap. So within the nucleus of the cell, before our pre-mRNA actually leaves the nucleus, the 5 end of the precursor mRNA is altered by the attachment or the addition of a guanosine nucleotide via a special type of bond, a special type of linkage known as the 5 to 5 triphosphate linkage. And following the addition of the attachment of this cap, the guanosine nucleotide is also altered in several ways. One of the ways in which the guanosine nucleotide is altered is by the methylation of the 7 position to form the 7 methyl guanosine nucleotide. So this type of 5 guanosine triphosphate cap is shown in the diagram. So let's pretend that this is the 5 end of our pre-mRNA that is synthesized directly following the process of transcription. So basically what we do is we add this guanosine nucleotide via the following triphosphate bond. The reason it's called a triphosphate bond or a triphosphate linkage is because we have one, two, three, phosphorus atoms. And the reason it's called a 5 to 5 triphosphate linkage is because that linkage is between the fifth carbon on this sugar and the fifth carbon on this ribose sugar. So this is the 5-guanosine triphosphate cap. Now the question is, why exactly should we add this cap to our pre-mRNA molecule? What is the function of this cap? Well, basically one important function of this cap is to protect uh, our mRNA 
from the degradation that could take place during the process of translation, during the process of protein synthesis. And not only that, this addition of the 5 cap also basically gives our mRNA the ability to leave our nucleus through the nuclear pores and enter the cytoplasm of our cell. So it also stabilizes the mRNA molecule and aids in transport across the nuclear membrane of the nucleus of the cell. Now, let's move on to the second type of process, second type of post-transcriptional modification that takes place in the nucleus, known as the polyadenylation of the three and tail. So before the nucleus or before the pre-mRNA actually leaves our nucleus, our tail has to actually be removed. So a small section of the tail of the pre-mRNA is removed and instead we add many adenosine nucleotides and this tail, this 3N tail is now known as the poly A tail. So in this type of post-transcriptional modification, the 3 end of the precursor mRNA is removed and a series of adenosine nucleotides are added. And therefore, the 3 end tail that contains the many adenosine nucleotides is known as the polyadenosine tail or the polyadenine tail. Now, just as the 5 cap, adds the ability to resist different types of degradation in the cytoplasm and gives our mRNA stability, the poly A tail also provides the mRNA with stability and keeps the tail from degrading in the cytoplasm of the cell and it also aids in the transport of our, pre um, of our mRNA from the nucleus to the cytoplasm of our cell. So basically what happens is if this is our mRNA molecule, if this is the pre-mRNA molecule and this is the 5N and this is the 3N, what happens is a small section of the 3N of the pre-mRNA is cleaved, is removed and then we add a bunch of adenosine phosphates. How many? Well, anywhere from 200 to 250 adenosine molecules, adenosine nucleotides are added to our tail, to our end. And that's exactly why it's known as the poly A or the polyadenosine tail. Now let's move on to the final type of post-transcriptional modification and this is known as the process of splicing. So we remove regions uh, known as the introns and we combine the regions known as the exons. So not all regions of the pre-mRNA molecule code for our protein or proteins. Those regions that do code for the proteins are known as exons and those regions that do not code for the protein are known as introns. And so a uh, special type of uh, special types of enzymes that together are known as the spliceosome basically remove our introns and splice together or combine or glue our exons and we form the final mRNA molecule. So basically to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose this is our precursor mRNA that now contains the poly A tail that is shown here and it also contains the 5-guanosine triphosphate cap. Now before our pre-mRNA actually becomes the mRNA and is able to leave the nucleus, the final process that has to take place is the following. So the molecule contains sections known as exons and these are the sections that actually carry the genetic code that codes for our protein. It also contains these introns which are sections that do not code for any type of protein. So what must take place in the nucleus is a certain set of proteins known as the spliceosome has to remove these introns and basically splice together or combine our exons. So these 
three sections are removed and we basically splice together these four axon sections including the poly A tail and so we form the following molecule as shown. So it also should contain our poly A tail. So once all these processes actually take place, once we add the five cap, once we add our tail that contains the polyadenosine nucleotides, and once we splice together the exons and remove the introns, only then does our pre-mRNA molecule become the mRNA molecule, and only then can the messenger RNA actually exit the nucleus into to the cytoplasm and undergo protein synthesis and be used by the ribosomes to synthesize our proteins. Now the entire purpose of adding this 5 cap and the poly A tail is to basically give our mRNA molecule the ability to resist degradation by different types of enzymes and different types of proteins. It also gives our mRNA molecule the ability to basically travel from the nucleus and into the cytoplasm of our cell.